Hi everybody, it's me. Um, I was watching this awesome crafter on YouTube and her channel name is The Posh Paper Lady. If I can remember, I will link it below, but she's got some fabulous, fabulous ideas and she gets most of her supplies from the Dollar Tree. And she had one that she had done the beginning of this year in January. And um, I just caught it. And I loved it. So I wanted to share it. I'm not near as good as she is. So please <laughs> um, pray for me. Um, I'm just kidding. Just uh, She's fabulous. She really is. Um, so I'm just going to get to it instead of talking. Because she was making these journals, and instead of, you know, like junk journals that we see all over YouTube now, um, it was just a regular plain, like a bullet journal type thing, and uh, um, it was just, it was perfect the way she did it. And she uses chipboard, you know, 90% of the time, and, you know, chipboard is great. It really is. And you can get different thicknesses. There's some that are really thin and, you know, uh, then there's stuff that's really, really thick. Um, but chipboard can sometimes, you know, get expensive. And if you've watched any of my channels, you know I do a lot of recycling or any of my videos. Not any of my channels because this is the only one I have. Um, and I use, you know, cardboard from uh, food that we that we eat. Oh my gosh, my brain just doesn't want to work today. This is also a book cover. The I got it from, I think, Goodwill or the thrift store or something like that, Salvation Army. I don't remember. But it was falling apart, but the pages inside were fabulous. So even if you didn't have, you know, recycles or chipboard, you had an old book that was falling apart, you could even use, you know, old book covers. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, that was my son. I've got my son's dogs for the week. Well, I had them. They're going to pick them up today. They went on vacation. and um, So that was him telling me they were going to run some errands before picking up the dogs. But, um, yeah, these babies have been featured in, in one of my other videos when I was doing a magazine slash blue book. And I've got Milo and Timber here. Come here, Milo. Let's see if we can get a, a headshot. You want a headshot? Come here. Come on, can you stick your head up here? I know Timber can. You're just old, aren't you? Let me see if I can get my camera. Oh, there's Milo. All right, come here, Timber. Come here. Now, Timber is part, part wolf, if I'm not mistaken. He's got a little bit of wolf in him, but he's huge. Come here. Come here. You want to get some camera time? Yep. I see a nose. I see a nose. I see a nose. All right, let me see. Oh, nope. Anyway. Okay, sorry about that. Let's get back to crafting. All right, so um, me, I use recycles. Um, sometimes I do use chipboard. It depends on what I'm doing. But <clears throat> I just wanted, I've never been one that wanted to go out and spend a lot of money just to be creative. It never made sense to me. So I'm going to put these aside. Oh, now they're going to wrestle. You guys got a little bit of air time and now you're wrestling, huh? Hey, stop fighting Milo. Timber, knock it off. All right. So the ones I use is, um, sorry, there's a glare on there, is recycle. And, okay, the directions that she gave was she, you need one piece of decorative paper that's nine and a half inches by 12 inches okay you need your liner paper that's 10 inches by six and three quarter two chipboard pieces or cardboard that are five by seven now this is copy paper and you can use anything you want but, you know, copy paper is fairly inexpensive. She says 50 sheets at 6 and 7 eighths 
by 4 and 7 eighths. Okay, and that's for the inside. And there, I'll show you that in a minute. Now, there is a thing. When you trim your copy paper down, you're going to have another 50 sheets of one salt smaller size and another 50 sheets of a little bit bigger. So you can cut these in half, make a smaller journal, or one that's longer, or any way you want. But you can still use these to make more. All right, I just wanted to put that out there. So there's no waste, okay? So at this point, I just have single-sided. I don't even remember where I got this paper from. It's been so long, but it came in the same paper pack. I uh, don't we'll see it very well. I'm getting a really bad glare this morning for some reason. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this, and then I'm going to attach these and when I do, I'm going to leave a 3 8 inch space between them. I'm not using a spine, okay? Um, because if, if you use the spine, then the book wouldn't open all the way. It would just kind of... Anyways, when you watch your video, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so let's get this... Uh, let's get one down first. Okay, so I'm going to attach these. And I'm just using um, double-sided tape, and I will be right back. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I got my tape all over the back of it. I'm going to kind of center that as best I can. And now what she suggested on her video was to make sure you get that three and a half inch mark. I'm not very good with this particular scoreboard because um, this thing is way too sharp. You see that? And it cuts paper really easy. So I have one I got from, uh, oh, foo, I don't even remember what company I got. I think I got it from scrapbook.com, but I don't remember what company makes it. Um, but this is a bone folder, and you want three eighths of an inch. So, you, oh well, that'll work right there. That's perfect. And then you go just one, two, three. It's depends on wherever you lay your paper down at, you know. And it's not really a really big score. Oops. Maybe you need to use this one. Let's see, one, two, three. So I just won't push that hard. Okay. Oops, that one got stuck on me. And then taking the other one and just lining it up to that fold. Now she really makes this look so totally easy. And it really is. It's just, no, baby, you can't help. You're going to get stuck to the paper. <laughs> you could come say hi. No? But we get a nose up there, huh? Mwah. Mommy and Daddy will be here in a few minutes. Go on. Good boy. Okay. Yeah, he's, I believe Timber is, um... Quarter wolf. His mom was half wolf, so. <clears throat> Alright, and then from there, I'm going to trim this a little bit. And then I'm going to miter the corners, okay? Mitering the corners. You may already know this. You may not. I didn't when I first started crafting it. I, it took a very smart lead on, on one of the YouTube channels to uh, explain it really nicely. There we go. Okay, but before I fold those over, I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm just going to press the tape pieces down. All right. 
There we go. I'm going to just kind of fold that over a little bit. Kind of fold that over. Fold that. Now you could use tape if you wanted. You could use glue. Um, me personally, I'm going to use some glue for these fold overs. No, baby, you can't help me. Me, I don't personally like using glue on paper over a big area um, because it always tends to want to leave like, you know, those bumps or those bubbles in the, um, in the paper. But because this is going to be covered with the liner paper, it's not going to be that bad. Make sure you crease that in there. And I use my fingers because I like to make sure it gets right up to the edges. When you miter those edges, it gives your corners um, a neater look instead of having all that excess paper kind of build up right there. Gives it more of a professional look. Uh oh, oh no. Okay, that's my liner paper. I taped it earlier so that I would save a little bit of time. Come on. It's almost full, but I had it right side up, so it takes it a minute longer to... Okay. But yeah, that's all I'm doing is... the excess glue that kind of scooched out the sides and just like right there and then the last piece and again I got it stuck <laughs> found before I did that pre-fold, you know, where I folded the ed the papers over the edges before I glued it. Um, I found before I did that, uh, a, lot of, a lot of times my paper would rip when it was going around something when I was trying to, you know, cover something up. And, uh, Look at that. See those corners? See how great that looks? And this is what the outside of the book is going to look like. Now, a, the 3 8 inch between the spines or between the covers is to fit your papers that are going to go in here. See how perfect that is? Right there. And we'll get to that in just a minute, but let's go ahead and do the, uh, the liner. 
This is just a coordinating piece of paper from the same paper pack. And line that up. for the front and then that'll be the inside cover. It's not giving you a very good, there we go, there's more of a now to do the paper. Okay, this is about as tight as I can get it. Put some uh, either uh, scrap chipboard or chipboard, sorry, or scrap of the uh, recycled cardboard, whatever you're using when you're using this. So that way you're not marring up the paper. So now I'm just taking Eileen's. You can use pretty much any glue that will give. And I'm just putting it along the edge, making sure it's nice and covered to make sure all of them get it. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower these because I don't want these to stick to the paper. Make sure your pages are even. There we go. All right. and then I'm just going to take my fingers now I'm getting a pretty good amount on there okay because once these glue together these are going to stay but I'm using my finger to spread it to make sure it hits all the pages Now, I believe she uses reptile glue, and I've never used that before, so I'm not sure about the, uh, uh, what do you call it, you know, the properties of that one. So, and then I'm just going to pinch it closed to hold the pieces together while they dry. Now, if I wasn't doing it for this particular reason, I would have done this already. That's what she suggests and have it done ahead of time before you start. <clears throat> so that way it's already dried and you can, you know, if you're doing three or four or five of these or whatever, um, you can have them uh, already done and waiting for you. And doing it this way also takes out, you know, sewing them and uh, using whatever other method you might use for um, binding a journal. And then we'll let this sit for about 30 minutes and then we'll come back. Yeah, back. Okay. So this dried really nicely. See how that worked? Okay. Now we want to add it to this. So I'm going to do a little bit more, not a lot,
And I'm going to set it down right in the center. off. Now you don't want to close it just yet because obviously you want to wipe off any excess glue you have you might find. Just close it enough to make sure you're in the middle where you need to be. Now she suggests if I remember correctly, you know, to let this set for a little while before you open it and before you, uh, you know, start flipping through pages and things like that, because it'll take a little while for it to completely, I guess, cure. Is that the word? And in the meantime, you could put, you know, like some wax paper or parchment paper or something in there so that it doesn't stick to anything. And that's the one thing I forgot to grab. Let me see. <clears throat> yeah, I absolutely do not have any on hand right now. But I've got some Ziploc baggies that should work. I would think. So I'm going to leave this here and let that rest for a minute. I'll put this one here on this side. Okay, that's not going to work. That works. Because while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and do the front. Or I've got two Ziplocs that'll work. And perfect size. Alrighty. So now we're just going to decorate. Now, if you know my motto, you know I never trust the sticky on a sticker. So I always add a little bit of glue. This is just one of those pop up things. It's got a little bit of sparkle on it, you know? And I thought with the way the flowers are, this would look perfect. Just as it is. To make sure. Pressing down in, and look, it's got a little bitty ledge right there. It's got a little bitty space right in through here on that side, and it's got a little bitty space right here. And it's all done except for drying. Now, of course, you can use any paper you want. Christmas is coming up, so that would be perfect for, uh, you know, sticking in a stocking. Um, giving a gift at some for somebody at work. There we go. You know, all of that. <clears throat> uh, let's see. That's going to take a minute to dry completely. I'm going to take one of these little halfback pearls, I think. And of course, I'm going to add a little dot of glue. Put it right on top just to give that a little bit of elegance. And you can't see it from there. There you go. And it's perfect. Look at that. You know, um, I know I make a lot of junk journals. 
And a lot of times, honestly, I don't know what to do with them. I just like creating them. And you use a lot of painted papers and gel prints and um, book papers and all kinds of things. But sometimes you just want to open something up, jot notes down, and not have to search for a place to do it at. So that's that one. So let's work on the next one. Actually, let's see if we can't pattern something from our leftover copy paper. None of that would be wasted. Okay, so this one is a Graphic 45 from the their Fairies Club. I forget the name of the... I've got it. It's like Springtime Fairies or Springtime something or another. It's a couple years old. Um, but I was thinking my granddaughter would like that. So I'm going to make her her own. And obviously I'm using more recycles from a Suddenly Salad. So let me get this all taped up and I'll be right back. I did want to say that I already put the glue on one of those sets of scraps that I had from cutting out this copy paper from the first time. I already put the glue on it ahead of time. So while this is getting ready to set up, I'm working on this. So, okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, so same process. I'm going to set this down. I'm going to do the same here, but I'm not, honestly, I'm not going to bother with the, the scoreboard. I'm just going to kind of wing it. <clears throat> oh, let's get the cutter so I can get at least a straight scrap out of that. I don't really want to cut all that off and waste it. I didn't measure this one that as much as I did the first one because I was scaling down to use the scraps. But being able to do this without any measurements is um, is really easy, you know. Let's see. Now with Graphic 45, their papers are really well made. Um, they're thicker. So what I'm doing is all I'm is I'm just scoring without my scoreboard. I'm just scoring along the edges to help the paper fold up a little bit better. Okay, so let me miter. Probably take some of that off, but that's okay. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing now. I'm going to. with a thicker paper and a stiffer paper you're more likely to get that cracking and we don't want that not on such a not, on, not with such a pretty paper right isn't that gorgeous but I am going to do this right off the bat and make sure that that's a, a decent
war mark. Okay. Yeah. All right, and again, I'm just going to glue. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and glue all four sides, and I'll be right back. Okay, I went ahead and measured these so that way you'd have the uh, measurements if you were going to use the scraps off of the copy paper. So um, I winged the outside. I didn't even I didn't even add that because it was already done. But the inside pieces were seven and three eighths by four and a quarter for the inside pieces. Okay. And the liner piece is eight and three quarters by seven and a quarter. Could probably do seven and an eighth, but yeah, that's going to be the inside of that one. I like that one better than what's on the other side. Oh, and the graphic 45, I believe is once upon a fairy. Not springtime, or once upon a springtime. Ha! That's what it is. Once upon a springtime. That was this. That was this. This is a beautiful uh, paper pad. I wish they would come back with it, but they have not. Um, I believe I found. I got mine on eBay. I think I don't remember. It's been it's been a couple of years. Uh oh, that one's out. All right, I need to grab another roll of tape. I'll be right back. Okay, so let's set this in here. Down. But again, I want to make sure. Spine is This way you have a nice, crisp, professional look. See how pretty that is? It's nice and crisp. I'm going to use my phone folder and kind of burnish this down. Alrighty. See how easy that was? And you can decorate the front any which way you want. Let me see. There we go. And that's a little bit tacky, which is good. I'm going to add a little bit more. Just a little bit. because it's still a little tacky. And I'm going to go ahead and just set it in here. Make sure I've got room on both sides. The other one should be dry, and it is, so I'm going to use the baggies I used in the first one right in here. And right in here. There we go. Close that. Well, that gives it a little bit of an extra lip. 
but you could probably put an ink pen or a pencil or something in there. That would probably be a really good idea. So I'm going to burnish this down a little bit. Press that in. And we'll set it aside for just a moment. Alrighty, so this one is all done and dried. And look at that. It doesn't come out. I mean, you could tear it out if you needed to. But you've got your own and it'll lay open. That was what she said about not putting a spine, you know, in that little three and eight three-eighths of an inch spot. But look at that. It'll lay open flat. It'll close flat. Look how pretty that is. And for this one, I believe I've got some uh, Oh, I don't even know what you call these ephemera pages <clears throat> from the paper pack. Let me get some uh, pop-up squares. That's what I'm going to do, some foam squares. Oh. These, I don't even remember what size they are, but I found them at a, one of those, um, like a discount warehouse type thing, and they had everything marked down, and they were perfect little foam squares. And then what would be good? I don't know. I like the life itself is a most wonderful fairy tale, and then we've got spread your wings happily ever after. I think I'll go with the happily ever after over this one because the outside edges match the inside. So let's do that. Whoops. So let's cut this out really quick. bit of a line at the bottom so. so should we do it straight up and down or kind of off to the side a little bit let's do it off to the side a little bit I wonder if I should round the edges or not nah And I'm going to pop this up on some foam dots. Oops. And of course, my favorite thing is never trust the sticky on the back of a sticker. So I always add a little bit of glue for me. That's my that's my motto. I'm debating on putting one right dead in the middle. Might as well. And 
just to give it a little bit more stability and strength. Well, not a lot of, this is one of those things where you, you know, like when you're doing your mascara or something, you stick your tongue out because that's the only way it's going to work. There we go. Right. And I'm just going to put a little bit, not a whole lot, but just enough. I, I like to think of it as it's, it's enough to remind the sticky that it's supposed to work. Now we could, you know, you could do whatever you want. You know, we could add some more pearls, like maybe at the bottom and at the top. Let's try it. Let me show you what I'm going to do. Way I'm not getting glue all over my fingers for a little bitty. Halfback pearl. These are really small too. And you know what's funny is as I'm pulling them off, it's pulling the sticker off. Or yeah, the sticky off the back of them. I don't know if you can see that. So it's a good thing I put glue down. that one it brought it with. That just kind of gives it a little bit more class or a little bit of elegance or a little bit of bling. There we go. You see how pretty that is? And she'll have her own little notebook. Or I may make her something different. I don't know. But the whole thing is, you can use your scrap papers up. You can use recycle. You can use, you know, leftover stickers, whatever you've got. Ephemera, however you want it to work. You can mount it, you can ink the edges, you can do whatever you want. If you wanted to make a pocket on the inside, you could do that. Could add something like a little loop right here and add a pen or a pencil, which I might do with that one because I'm. she likes unicorns, I think, so might go ahead and do that but I don't know I might make her something different and if she watches this and knows then she already knows what she'll get for Christmas so obviously I can't tell her that but uh but there we go two I didn't have to buy anything it was everything I already had and I've got two notebooks I believe she called them bullet something or another. But yeah, this was not my idea. I got this idea from the posh paper lady. I'll try to remember um, to put her link in the description below. 
but if I have a brain fart and I completely blow it, um, it is the posh paper lady, P-O-S-H. So I'm going to go. I want everybody to have a wonderful day and thank you so much for watching my video. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already. Share it if you like this video and I've given you some inspiration. That helps me a lot. Um, I'm not monetized, uh, so that's not a big deal. Um, but I like sharing what I learned too. So always remember, find the humor in life because if you don't, life sucks. On that note, have a wonderful day and God bless.